to get to know him. He'll change your life for the better. Hallelujah. He'll bless you when you normally would have found your way into a pit of despair. But he'll bless you. Hallelujah. So important that we look for the blessings of the Lord. And that we see them when they happen. And that we not just think that these things are happening because of chance. If we love the Lord, the Lord loves us. Even if we don't love him, he loves us. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God loved us before we even cared about him. So if you don't know him today, today would be a great opportunity to get to know him. I first draw your attention to the book of Psalm chapter 63. We find David in the desert of Judah that was certainly a dry and a barren land. In this reading, David uses the setting as a background really for his spiritual condition. He's been separated from God's presence. God was located at that time in the tabernacle that had been prepared for him, and this is where David heretofore had worshipped. He had actually worshipped in the presence of God's glory. Let's read it. Psalm 63, 1. O God, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. My soul thirsteth for thee. My flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is, to see thy power and thy glory, so as I have seen thee in the sanctuary. Because thy loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee. Amen. Thus will I bless thee while I live. I will lift up my hands in thy name. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips. When I remember thee upon my bed and meditate on thee in the night watches, because thou hast been my help, therefore in the shadow of thy wings will I rejoice. I'm going to talk to you for a little bit today on this subject. Sometimes we just have to take a praise break. Amen. We take Amen. breaks for all kinds of things in our life. Why not a praise break? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Lord, talk to our hearts today. Instruct us in righteousness. Teach us, guide us. Show us a better way. In Jesus' precious name, everybody said amen. amen. You may be seated. One thing is certain about life. Job said it like this, man that is born of a woman is a few days, and those days are full of trouble. So, you know, one thing we know about life, there can be the highest of highs, as well as the lowest of lows. There are peaceful times, there are stressful times, there are painful times, and, and yes, there are even restful times. I want to give a couple of examples of what I'm talking about here this morning. I was listening to a radio program Friday past, and a news report suddenly came on about a flight you may have heard this, I don't know, but it was literally filled with people trying to get back home after the holidays. And there was a tall, lanky guy, and there was a short, stocky guy on the plane, and the short, stocky guy gave the tall, lanky guy a mean look as he started down the aisle. And when the tall, lanky guy arrived to the place where the short, stocky guy was, he he proceeded to take a full-blown swing at him, and before anybody knew what happened, there was war, not just rumors of war, but there was war on that plane. They were punching, they were kicking, they were screaming, 
The stewardess was screaming at the top of her lungs, this is a federal offense. That didn't stop them. On and on it went until finally they got the two separated. If only this was the beginning of this plain load of people's evening. The airline next proceeded to make everyone deplane, and then to everybody's dismay, they canceled the flight con completely, and no one got home on that night. Friends, this was, as the ads say, a peptabismal moment for most. <laughs> However, for the true apostolic Christian, this is what I would call a praise break moment. Do we realize these moments aren't the unusual for God's children? These are the norm. Again, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try thee as though some strange thing happened unto you. These things just happen. They happen when you least expect it. But then those good times also come along, and, and it's a blessing when they do. Amen? Amen? The Apostle Paul in 1 Peter 4, 12 said it like this, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you. Then verse 13, But rejoice inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings. If you've gone through it, he went through a whole lot worse. But rejoice in as much as you are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye. For the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. On their part he is evil spoken of, but on your part he is glorified. The point being troubling times will come. Distress will come, and this is why God planted deep within his people the ability for a season to isolate from stress, to isolate from worry, to isolate from fear and confusion by stopping what you're doing, and for a season, just lifting up your hands and saying, Lord, I want to thank you, Lord, in spite of what's going on. I want to praise you no matter what's happening in my life. Hallelujah. If my neighbor came at me and gave me a tough time today, I'm just going to take a praise break in spite of it. Lord, I'm not willing to lose my religion over anybody or anything. I'm just going to praise you, God, in spite of what's taking place. Fifteen or so years ago, never forget it. How could you forget it? I was with a couple of preachers as well as a group of saints. And we were at Heathrow Airport in London. We were on our way to South Africa to hold a revival meeting when terrorists attempted to take over the airport. The airport was immediately shut down. We couldn't go anywhere for over 40 hours. You, I mean, they had people laying all over the conveyor belts, people laying in the corners. They, 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 there was no place to sit. It was, it was just one of those times where you're saying, man, is this the will of God that we really went on this trip? But anyway, the airport was shut down. We couldn't go anywhere. Finally, we're about to get on the airplane after 40 hours, over 40 hours, and the drunk guy is walking down the uh, the the gangway there, or the, the uh, aisle there, and he reaches over and pulls the fire alarm. And, and when the fire alarm, we went off, we said, oh, Lord, help us. And the stewardess, she rushes over to us, said, if you don't get on that plane, you're going to be here another 10 hours. So we got on that plane, and, and lo and behold, man, we were airborne, and, and friends, I promise you, that became a praise break moment. You see, church, we have several choices when struggles, when pressures, when pain, when distress comes our way. We can wallow around in negativism. We can moan and groan about how terrible things are. 
Or we can just make up our minds, I'm going to stop right now, and God, I'm going to give you glory. You knew I was going to be here. Lord, you knew I was going to be right here at this time today. And Lord God, I'm just praising you. I'm giving you glory, Lord, for always being with me, Lord. You've never forsaken me, Lord. You've never left me, God. And, and I want to praise you in spite of what's going on in my life. We can say, woe is me or God is with me. What are you going to say? We can say this is terrible or we can say God is incredible. Oh, my Lord, sounds like the power of positive thing, thinking. I want you to know if we believe God orders our steps, he knew right where we was going to be at that exact moment. So hallelujah. God knew maybe I needed to go so through something. I don't know. But I'm going to praise him in spite of what comes my way. Let's go back to Psalm 63, verse 1, where David again said, O God, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. My soul thirsteth for thee. My flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. You see, David refused to head downward. He instead chose to go up. He certainly acknowledged the dry and thirsty land, but, but then he reminded himself about the other extreme. He said in verse 2, My soul thirsts, my flesh longs to see thy power and thy glory, so as I have seen thee in the sanctuary. Because thy loving kindness is better than life, then my lips shall praise thee. Thus will I bless thee while I live. I will lift up my hands in thy name. And because I've chosen to take a praise break, verse 5 continues with, My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips when I remember thee upon my bed and meditate on thee in the night watches because thou hast been my help. Therefore, in the shadow of thy wings, I will rejoice. I wonder if anybody has a rejoicing bone in your bodies today. Anybody glad to be alive and kicking? Anybody glad to be hallelujah, somebody that's in the Lord's army? Anybody glad that you have a God that loves you? Hallelujah. David's momentary solution to the current dilemma was to take a praise break. He chose praise in the hopes that his renewed focus would short circuit his dilemma. And yes, we all have dilemmas in our lives. And friends, we need to take this example and run with it. I'm telling you, each and every one of us, we need to take his example and we need to go with it. We really have two choices in life. When bad news comes, when struggles come, we can submit or instead we can lift up holy hands. We can moan and groan or we can say God is with me. He's not going to allow more to come on me than I'm able to bear. Hallelujah. We can complain and doubt or, or we can say, God, you knew I was going to be here and there's purpose in it. So I'm just going to praise you in spite of what's going on in my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some 626 years before Christ, we find the prophet. The prophet Habakkuk giving a prophecy concerning God's people being brought into captivity. And I want you to listen to what he writes here. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines, the labor of the olive shall fail, and the field shall yield no meat, the flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stalls. stalls. Man, that sounds mighty bleak, doesn't it, church? Sounds kind of hopeless, doesn't it? Yet that wasn't the end of the story. In fact, verse 18 continues with, Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength, and he will make my feet like hinds feet, 
and he will make me to walk upon mine high places. Hallelujah. To the chief singer on my stringed instruments. Friends, I want you to understand there is a way that we can choose to live that I promise you is a better way. This old prophet knew what was coming by godly insight some 50 to 60 years before it ever happened, and yet he was already lifting up his head and encouraging himself. He was already promoting a spiritual anti-venom to their captivity by taking a praise break. I wonder if anybody wants to create a little anti-venom to all of the negativism that's going on in this world. Hallelujah, if you shook it all up and put it together, it wouldn't be worth a whole lot. But hallelujah, what we give to God is always returned to us. If we rejoice in the Lord, guess what? The Lord smiles down on us. If we give Him glory, the Lord showers us with blessings. I want us to know that there is help in time of trouble. There is a pro to the anti that comes into your life. There is the beginning of a solution to the dilemma. And the beginning is always to stop and to remember that your God will never fail you. He will never forsake you. If we'll just take a moment to praise him... We might just begin working ourselves out of the problem by short-circuiting the problem before it ever takes hold in our lives. Listen to the words of David, Psalm 34, 1. He said, I will bless the Lord at all times. Does that mean in the bad times? Yes, I will bless the Lord at all times. Does that mean the worrisome times and the fearful times and the stressful times and the discombobulated times? I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. He said, I sought the Lord, and he heard me and delivered me from all of my fears. They looked unto him, and hallelujah, their load was lightened, and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. Oh, taste and see. That the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Friends, if we have the right perspective on life and understand always that this too shall pass. There's going to be good days. A lot of good days. Going to be some bad days all along the way. But guess what? This too shall pass. And the thing that God's people have that most people don't is they've got the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. They're walking with the blood of Jesus applied to their lives. And hallelujah, it doesn't matter what the devil does. God is greater. I said God is greater. God is greater. I wish we'd just take a praise break right about now. I wish somebody would clap your hands to the Lord and shout into God with a voice of triumph. Hallelujah. You are great, my God. You are awesome, my God. You are incredible, my God. Hallelujah. Friends, when you're walking through the valley of the shadow of death, when you find yourselves in a prison of sorts, as did Paul and Silas, when you find yourself in the fire, when you find yourself in the flood, when you find yourself in the struggle for your spiritual well-being, the beginning of your answer is always to stop and take time out to take a praise break. Come on, family of God. Do you have a good old-fashioned praise deep within your life on this morning? 
Hallelujah. Do you have anything to be glad about in your God? I tell you what, I, 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 my, my mind cannot enumerate the blessings that the Lord has bestowed upon my life. And so I choose to praise him. I choose to praise him. Oh, Brother Sarton, you don't understand. I'm weary. I'm tired. I'm, I'm worn out. I'm telling you there's victory on the other side of your praise break. Oh, my neighbor gave me a hard time this week. There's victory on the other side of taking a praise break. Oh, hallelujah. I had a rough time on the job today. Walk through the door and say, God, I'm going to give you glory in spite of what's taking place. I'm going to give you honor in spite of what's taking place in my world. I'm telling you there's victory on the other side of that praise break. Hallelujah. All of us know about the wayward prophet Jonah. He literally ran from the will of God, ends up in a God-prepared fish for three days and three nights. Then in Jonah chapter 2, verse 1, we find, oh, hallelujah, he kind of started getting his act together. Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God out of the fish's belly and said, I cried by reason of mine affliction unto the Lord, and you know what? He heard me. Doesn't matter where you find yourself, no matter what the dilemma is, doesn't matter what the situation is, I'm telling you, the Lord will hear you when you cry out to him. Verse 3, for thou hast cast me into the deep, into the midst of the seas. The floods compassed me about. All of thy billows and thy waves passed over me. Then I said, I am cast out of thy sight. Yet I will look again toward thy holy temple. I'll tell you, it's easy to get distracted from the purpose of God in this old world. It's easy to get so caught up in the living of life that you forget about the temple, you forget about praise, you forget about thanksgiving, you forget about the many blessings that God has bestowed upon your life. And that's kind of what Jonah had done. Let me read verse 5. The waters compassed me about even to the soul. The depth closed me round about. The weeds were wrapped about my head. I went down to the bottoms of the mountains. The earth with her bars, he's talking about ribs, was about me forever. Yet hast thou brought up my life from corruption, O Lord my God. You put me into this to get me out of a corrupt state. Sometimes God allows us to go into things to get us out of that corrupt choice that we've made. That corrupt way that we've chosen to live our lives. He said in verse 7, when my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord and my prayer came in unto thee into thy holy temple. They that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy. Notice this, the first thing Jonah did was get to praying. But then in verse 9, he continued on with, But I will sacrifice unto thee with a voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that that I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. What Jonah did was get to offering thanks and praise to God. And when he did, verse 10 continues on with these words, And the Lord spake unto the fish, It vomited out Jonah up on the dry land. And then guess what? He got to preaching to Nineveh. And the whole city turned away from sin and they embraced godliness. I'm saying it matters not where you find yourself on this morning if you will just stop and give to God glory. Oh, I heard some bad news, Lord. You know what's going on in my life. God, I'm going to give you glory in spite of what I've just heard, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody comes along with, a, with, a bad, with bad news. None of that matters. God, you are in control of my life. You are in charge of my, my present. You are in charge of my future. So I just choose to give you glory, God. If you will praise right in the middle of your dilemma. God will begin to move for you in a mighty way. Oh, but I don't feel like praising him. That's why it's called a sacrifice of praise. 
I don't feel like offering thanksgiving. That's why it's called a sacrifice of thanksgiving. You go ahead and sacrifice whether you feel like it or not. You offer sacrifice whether, whether your attitude is in it or not. I'm going to offer sacrifice to my God. I'm going to lift up my hands. I'm going to lift up my voice. And I'm going to exalt you in the highest. I'm going to let everybody know, God, that you are number one in my life. Doesn't matter what's taking place in my life. I'm going to praise you in spite of what's going on in my world. I'm preaching there comes a time in all of our lives when we just need to stop what we're doing and take a praise break. Psalmist David wholeheartedly believed this great truth. In fact, he took these praise breaks over and over and over and over again. Proof of this is found in Psalm 103.1. Bless the Lord, O my soul and all, that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And forget not all his benefits. Hallelujah. You, you can get so cluttered, down, so, so weighted down in the dilemma that you forget about all of the benefits that the Lord has bestowed upon you and is continuing to bestow upon you. Forget not all of his benefits. Who forgiveth all of thine iniquities. Friends, if that's all the Lord did for me was forgive me of, of the wrongs that I've done in my life, friends, that would be enough right there to praise him all the day long. He said, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all of thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Friends, when you're going through it, I don't care if you're 25, you feel like you're 95. When you're going through it, I'm talking about really going through it and pressure has, has squeezed on your head so you don't, you don't know which way to go and how to act. There's only one thing to do in those kinds of situations and that's lift up holy hands unto the Lord and let him know I love you in spite of what's taking place in my life. I appreciate you no matter what's happening in my world. I praise you, God, no matter what the devil has done to me. I'm going to praise you in spite in spite of all these things, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Nothing like renewing. Nothing like renewing. Hallelujah. You say, well, I've been dragging around for the last three months. Why has it taken you so long to, to get to magnifying God and getting to praising God? Because there's renewing found in praise. There's renewing found in thanksgiving. When you lift up holy hands to the Lord and, and bless Him in spite of what's going on, I'm telling you, you'll begin to feel that spirit that's still within you beginning to stir. Hallelujah, that spirit within you beginning to move. And I'm telling you, where you were sad before, you'll start to find joy creeping in around the edges. Where you was, where you was depressed before, you'll, you'll find the weight of that, that depression beginning to leave. What's going on there? Your youth is being renewed like the eagles. The scripture said the Lord executeth righteousness. In other words, he advances justice for all that are oppressed. Have you been oppressed? Have you been opposed? Have you had all kinds of things coming against your life? Get your ephod on. Get your praise garment on. Oh, Lord Jesus, I feel like praising you right now. Hallelujah. Get that ephod on and just start praising God. Start magnifying God in spite of what's taking place in your life. The Lord executeth righteousness for all that are oppressed. The point being God deals with whatever's oppressing us. Whatever's coming against us, God deals with it. So why in the world would we not stop what we're doing when troubles come and just take out time to offer a sacrifice of praise and thanks right in the middle of that thing that's hindering us. Hallelujah. 
David in that wilderness of Judea is praising God. David, when his own son is chasing him to the ends of the earth, what is he doing? He's praising God. Why is he praising God? Remember, he was a forerunner of greater things to come. And hallelujah, he was letting us know there's a better way to live your life. There's a better way to deal with this old world. And the better way is to give God glory in spite of what's taking place in your life. Well, amen, glory to God, hallelujah. Psalm 30, verse 1, we find this same man saying, I will extol thee, O Lord, for thou hast lifted me up and not made my foes to rejoice over me. O Lord, my God, I cried unto thee, and thou hast healed me. O Lord, thou hast brought up my soul from the grave, from destruction. Thou hast kept me alive that I should not go down to the pit. Sing unto the Lord, O ye saints of his, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. Say, I don't have anything to thank the Lord for, then thank the Lord for his holiness. Hallelujah. God's first attribute is holiness. He is holy before he is anything else. Hallelujah. I can praise God for his holiness. Get your mind off of you and get your mind on him. You are a holy God. You reign in holiness. You reign in purity. You reign in power. And God, I'm just going to give you glory. I'll tell you what's going to happen. It isn't going to take long until God says, wait a minute, he's been there long enough. I'm getting him out of that mess. Woo. If, he's, if he's praising me, Go, when, when he's going through these things, I'm going to get him out of there. I'm going to put him on the mountaintop. I'm going to really give him something to rejoice over. I am preaching to all of God's children on this morning. There come certain times in our lives when we just got to make up our mind. Hallelujah. Come Hades or high water, I'm going to bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. I'm going to bless the Lord. I'm going to give him glory. I'm going to praise him. He's a good God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Was God failing Jonah when he put him in the belly of the fish? No. God was saving Jonah. How about Psalm 59, 16? But I will sing of thy power. Yea, I will sing aloud of thy mercy in the morning. For thou hast been my defense and my refuge in the day of my trouble. Unto thee, O oh, my strength, will I sing. For God is my defense and the God of my mercy. But you don't understand, Brother Sarton, what's, what's been taking place on my job, with my family, with my friends, in my marriage, with my business. You don't understand what I've been dealing with concerning my health. I'm saying there's a praise break available for all situations. In fact, the Psalmist 56, chapter 1, verse said, Be merciful unto me, O God, for man would swallow me up. He, fighting daily, oppresseth me. Mine enemies would daily swallow me up, for they be many that fight against me, O thou most high. And if that would have been the end of the story, what a horrible story that would have been. But verse 3 went on to say, What time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. Friends, you've got a reason to praise the Lord. You've got a reason to exalt your God. You've got a reason to give him glory this morning. You've got a reason to lift him up. He is a great God. He is a wonderful God. He is a mighty God. He is an incredible God. What time I am afraid, Brother Tommy, I will trust in thee. Oh, the enemy came in like a flood. What time I am afraid, Lord, I will trust in thee. 
and said, but I just don't see the necessity of having to go through things. I want you to think about this. If Abraham Lincoln was a young man today, the traveling library would supply him with the books. A county caseworker would see that he had enough light to read by. The government would see that his parents got a monthly check, housing assistance, food stamps. Abe could apply for an additional education loan and some social service clubs would see that he went to camp each summer. The end result being there would be no Abraham Lincoln such as the one that we remember, the one that we love, the one that overcame poverty and adversity to become one of the greatest presidents of all time. You need to hear me. You, I don't think you, ju you, you just heard that. The point is this. Going through things make us stronger. Going through things make us appreciate the good times and long for the good times. And taking a praise break reminds God that we are leaning on Him to bring us from the valley and back up to the mountain. So often we despise the very things that form us into something that's worthy to live in this world. Hallelujah. Everybody's got a handout for this, handout for that. What about working hard and doing your best and, and reaching for the stars? And, and if you happen to only make it to the top of the trees, you climbed somewhat out of the pit that you were in. Well, amen, glory to God, hallelujah. That went over like a lead balloon, but I'm preaching to you today. We need to learn to lean on God. When the government says, I got something for you, I got a gift for you, you need to run as fast as you can. When the government replaces God's, the government's the problem, not God. You say, well, but what's wrong with that Social Security? Nothing wrong with that. You paid it in. And some people get in a situation where they, they've got to have help. There's no way. It was just life dealt them a horrible hand, and how am I going to get out of this mess? And, and, and in those cases, you don't mind helping people. But I have a problem with the government trying to become God. Because when the government tries to become God, government's power is limited. God's power is unlimited. If we would lean on Him instead of them, we would have so much more. Well, amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Story goes that there was a day when a boy and his fathers went into the mountains took shelter from a storm in the lee of some great gray boulders that lay like sleeping giants close to the crest of a lonely ridge. As the two looked upward, they saw as the wind lay its grim hands on a mountain pine that towered from the summit of the ridge. It was a sentinel that could escape no danger, an outpost to receive the first Shock of the enemy's attack. Savagely, the wind tore at that pine. The wind shook that pine violently. It howled through its branches. To the boy, the tree, strong though it was, seemed about to be torn to pieces. Look, Father, what the wind is doing to that pine. The full fury of the blast just then made the pine shudder and sway it. It heaved desperately against the black sky. Storms are an old story to that tree, said the father. A tree like that lives in a struggle from the time it is high enough to catch its first breath of air. Tennyson says, a tree is storm strengthened on a windy sight. The strongest, the strongest trees, son, are always those that have weathered 
the greatest number of gales. Besides, the question is not what is happening to the tree, but what is happening in the tree. The pine does not really seem to mind fighting the storm, does it? The boy asked. No, because it is able to withstand the strongest wind, the father answered. And it is the same with us. It really does not matter what happens to us, but it matters a great deal what happens within us. I'm preaching every time pressure-filled situations come our way. These are actually opportunities not to give in, not to chuck in the towel, but instead to stop right in the middle of the dilemma, lift up holy hands unto the Lord, and so, Lord, I'm going to praise you in spite of what's taking place in my life. I've lost my job. I'm going to praise you in spite of, of losing my job. I know, God, you've got something better for me down the road. I'm going to praise you in spite of having sickness, God. I know you're going to get me well. I'm trusting you, Lord. And, Lord, even if you don't, Lord, I'm going to be walking down streets of gold and, and drinking water from the crystal sea. See, taking a praise break reveals how very much we depend on Him, how much we trust Him. Hallelujah. Oh, God, I want you to know that I trust you. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, from the going down of the same to the rising of the sun the next morning, I want you to know that I trust you. I trust you with everything that is within my heart. Lord, you've never led me astray. You've let me walk into trials. You've let me walk into tri tribulation. You've let me walk into situations that I didn't understand why I was there. But God, you always got me out of that stuff. And Lord, I learned something in the process of having to go through those things. <laughs> Woo. Hallelujah. Can you thank God for the trials? Can you praise God in spite of the trials? If you can do that, then you will have grown. And you will become a better, you will have become a better man or woman than you than you were when you went into those things. I promise you that. Let me tell you what David was above all else. He was a professional at taking time out of his dilemmas to take a praise break. I have been young and now I'm old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Hallelujah. I'm sure you've got some of your own blessings that you can ascribe to the Lord. Psalm 3, 1, Lord, how are they increased that trouble me? Many are they that rise up against me. Many there be which say of my soul, there is no help for them in God's Selah. Again, he doesn't stop there. But thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me, my glory, and the lifter up of mine head. I cried unto the Lord with my voice, and he heard me out of his holy hill. I need to think about this a little while. Selah. I laid me down, I slept, I awaked. For the Lord sustained me. He strengthened me, encouraged me, he lifted me. I will not be afraid after going through these times. He went through his tough times, but the Lord sustained him. After going through these things, he says, Now I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people that have set themselves against me round about. Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God, for thou hast smitten all mine enemies upon the cheekbone. Thou hast broken the teeth of the ungodly. Salvation belongeth unto the Lord. Thy blessing is upon thy people oh friends we don't realize how blessed of God we really are we are blessed of the Lord we go through things but we are blessed of the Lord we have to deal with life but we are blessed of the Lord how would you like to have to go through things without him hallelujah 
Come on, do you have a praise in your heart? Even in the face of not understanding, do you have a praise in your heart? I think we need to set a new standard. First Pentecostal Church of West Main. No matter what's going on in my life, we're going to offer sacrifices of praise and thanks to our God. We're going to give Him glory. We're going to give Him honor. We're going to offer thanks. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Let's stand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Closing, a doctor wrote a letter of thanks to a school teacher for having given him so much encouragement when he had been in her class 30 years before. Thirty years before, no doubt he was struggling, he was doing everything that he could, but she was an ever source of encouragement in his life. So he sends her this letter to say thanks, and he later received this reply, I want you to know what your note meant to me. I am an old lady in my 80s, living alone in a small room, cooking my own meals, lonely and seeming like last leaf on the tree. You will be interested to know that I taught school for 50 years and yours is the first letter of appreciation I have ever received. It came on a cold blue morning and it cheered my lonely old heart as nothing has cheered me in many years. I wonder how many of us today have a praise offering for God that's hidden in your heart. Maybe you've forgotten to thank Him for something. You've just let it slip away and, 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 and yet now later you've You've learned to thank God for those situations. Again, how many of us have a praise offering? How many of us have a thank offering deep within our hearts? I'm preaching today that sometimes you just have to be willing to take a praise break. I'm not going to call everybody to the front tonight to this morning, but if you feel an unction, something moving within to just come forward, unless not everybody, if you feel it, I want you to come. If you feel that drawing, I want you to come. Just get closer to the front and just begin to praise the Lord. Just begin to magnify the Lord. Come on, just begin to magnify. Anybody feel a reason to pray?